I've worked with a lot of different headless CMS options that are great, but I think I just found my favorite when it comes to a visual editor with live preview. Let's take a look. What's up everyone? My name is James Hugh Quick and I do weekly videos on web development related topics, basically anything in the JavaScript ecosystem. And I've done a lot with headless CMSs. Uh, you've probably seen the, the concept of Jamstack in my uh, content in the past, talking about JavaScript APIs and markup, kind of the, the latest and greatest, which has evolved more recently, but latest and greatest in how we build web applications. And a lot of that is centered around where we get content from and how we pull that into our sites. And then, then kind of digging deeper into that workflow. So headless CMS options or headless content management system options are ones that uh, allow us to input our data for blog posts or for speaker profiles or things like that. We can input data, images, et cetera, and it's headless, meaning we just pull that information into the application that we're building, whether it's FeltKit or Next.js or Angular or whatever it is. Usually we do that with a REST API or GraphQL or whatever, but then we have to figure out like what's the best way to maintain this relationship of creating content in a CMS and a headless CMS writing the code to work with that and then having the ability to visualize what this is all going to look like. So I'm going to show you my favorite live preview visual editor, which is inside of Storyblock. So quick clarification, Storyblock is actually the sponsor of this video, but what I like to do with sponsors is figure out what are the features that I really love about them and then go and highlight that. So even though this is a sponsored video, it doesn't take away from the fact that I think that this experience is absolutely incredible. So let's actually see what we're talking about. So this live visual editor in here, you can see it's connected to a, a URL. So this localhost.5173. And if I go to that address, you can actually see that this content is here too. Here's my debugging uh, <laughs> HTML that I left in here. So it, we'll just leave it in there. So you can see this looks the exact same as what is here. So what this is doing is actually running my SvelteKit code. If I uh, kill this and run it again, you can see that this project is going to be running at localhost 5173. I could access it in the browser and then it's connected inside of Storyblock to show the content as well. Now this is really neat to just to get the preview and then I could like refresh if I need to. But the really, really cool thing about this is I'll show you how this is configured in a minute, but because of the way the code is configured, I can now come and click on individual items and notice that it lets me edit them over there on the right. So if I want to change this block, which is the, I think this is the headline or the teaser. It has a property called headline and it says live visual editor and I can update this right in line. And I can save this, but I get the preview here, but I can save the data. If I then come, I have to refresh over here because my SvelteKit application by itself didn't necessarily know that this stuff is updated, but inside of the editor specifically inside of here, as I change things, it automatically refreshes and shows me what this is gonna look like. So if I want to see, uh, if I want to reorder maybe the order of these features inside of this grid, I could come into grid and I can now drag and drop to, to reorder these. I can change this to uh, another feature something. And then I can even come and say another feature something bigger, start to see how this is going to impact the look of this when I have different text. This is usually kind of takes a minute to get to because usually you update the data, then you update the code, then you run it again. I can see all this right inside of here to see how this is going to impact the code and the display of how this is displayed. So this, I think, is the best live preview visual editor I've seen in a headless CMS. I think it's great. So let's go through and I'll show you a little bit of how I have this actually configured. I'll have a link to the official documentation for this in the description. So you can go and you can watch all this or read, read through all this if you want, but I'm using SvelteKit in here for this. So the one thing, the one big thing we'll need is I created a Storyblock.js utils file, and this is basically where we're configuring the Storyblock object, the Storyblock thing that comes from the Storyblock Svelte package. So we get a new one of these, and we call init and we pass it our access token, which in this case is, is public, so it's okay to include in here. And then we have this mapping, which maps between components and story block and then components in our actual code. So you can see uh, if we go back to story block and we come into here, you can see that it is listing out these components kind of as we click on them. So we have a page component and then we have 
a feature component inside of the grid component, etc. You can see that maps up on this left hand side and then on the right hand side is the actual component to display that. So if I go into the feature component, I could uh, change this to be text red or something is usually how we do this in Tailwind CSS. Uh, so I'm using Tailwind here. And actually uh, this text red should go inside of the H1. So now if I come back, notice that these are all uh, red. So you can see that this is actually connected in the way that we want. So this feature component correlates to this feature block, basically in story block. And then we have the grid as well. So this is basically just doing a three column grid and then displaying all of the ind individual blocks and so on and so on. So we have this mapping of blocks in story block to actual components inside of our code. And we do that mapping uh, with the initialization of story block by passing in the one-to-one -one components. Now, the other thing that gets interesting is we have a page.svelte for our routes. And inside of here, we have our load function. Now this, actually this is the page.js, but inside of here, we have our load function which is going to load the data that we're looking for. And in this case, we're looking specifically for the data for what in this case is the home page. So if we go back in Storyblock and we go into our content, you can see that we have basically one page here, which is home. We click on this and get back to those details. So inside of here, we're querying for that home record and then we are passing that data into our home route basically. And this will be our page.svelte file. Inside of here, we get the data. We can pass the data to a story block component. This is going to take care of passing the appropriate data to those different components. Remember that mapping of feature to feature component? So that's gonna take care of all of that stuff for us. Now, the other cool thing that's cool, it's repetitive, but is the use story block bridge. Now, inside of here, we're telling it which story ID we're basically looking for changes on and the story block bridge says, okay, if that thing changes in story block, go ahead and call back to this function. And this function now is going to replace the story that we have in this data prop with the new version of that story, if that makes sense. So this gives us this live preview that is super, super cool. So there's not a whole lot to configure here. The other thing that I, uh, that I didn't quite touch on is this feature, the individual components. Uh, we reference the story block editable. Now story block editable is the thing that allows us to click on this and come and edit this. So we use that tag and then we also export the uh, block itself and pass that into the tag. Now in Svelte, when we export let something, what that means is we accept that as a prop and that's where it gets passed down from this story block component where we pass in the block here. Again, it passes it to all the components that we need to get this really live, amazing, preview visual editor. So anyway, I think this is really, really cool and pretty revolutionary in my opinion. I'm curious, like what are your favorite tools to use for headless CMS? What are you already using and have you tried out Storyblock? If you have, let me know in the comments below what you think and if you have any feedback. Thank you to Storyblock for sponsoring and allowing me to do this video. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll catch you next time.